Hi, everybody, and welcome to the RHAP B&B for episode five of Survivor 46. My name is Mike Bloom, and truly, we have entered phase two of Survivor 46. But in this phase two, we're not collecting Infinity Stones, though perhaps we have collected a gem. We're going to talk about her boot and everything that happened as, hey, a tribe not named Yanu actually went to tribal council. And a lot of stuff went down. Uh, I'm so happy to welcome in this week's panel. Unfortunately, Liana could not join us this week. She is having her own sort of preemptive mergatory and having a bunch of company over. So she's making sure her shelter is wide enough to accompany all of those bodies. But luckily, I brought in twice the number of guests to still make it a motley trio, uh, much like Yanu themselves. So excited to welcome in the two co-hosts of the Mess Magnets podcast to talk about this very messy season. The only question I can ask right now is Kirsten McKinnis, Sasha Joseph, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> okay, so you're Kenzie. Um, so which of us is cute? <laughs> I like to quit me? things. I can be cute. <laughs> but you would never quit. Didn't you see I the know. second scene? As an actual competitive person, I think that would be me, where I'd be yeah. like, let me just lie and see I'm going to quit, <laughs> but actually ruin everything. I just, I'm imagining Sasha in uh, the Traders RHAP version being like, this is the hardest road that I've taken. <laughs> I just think back to those times that OU fumbled happened on the field. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the football. Listen, please, let's never talk. No, I'm just kidding. Shut up. <laughs> oh, you, you'll always be my number one. <laughs> well, I'm so excited to get both of your thoughts about this because, yeah, people were looking at this particular week as the best week, definitely since the premiere. Some are saying it's been the best week of the season so far. I think there was a lot of questions and perhaps trepidation as to, like, it's been the Yanu show for basically a month straight for basically – what, like, uh, seven hours or so? What's our eight and a half going to provide? And a lot of people were entertained by a lot that's happening, as well as, obviously, a lot to do around the boot. Kirsten, what have been your thoughts about Survivor 46 five weeks in? Okay, so I definitely agree that this episode was a lot stronger than some of the last few have been. I feel like the vibes have just been very off the first little bit. I don't know. I was having trouble connecting... And I don't know why. I just was ha having a bit of a struggle with it. Um, I'm 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 sad. Banu's gone. I know. I know that might be a controversial opinion. I know people are upset. He won my heart. Count me in that million. Uh, yeah, I think I think this is a pro Banu podcast. No, Listen, period. <laughs> it would not be the B and B if we were not for like the absolute messy, over the top yeah. contestants. Like, what you, you want to watch normal people on TV? I'm not interested in that. I want unhinged personality so i love that i am however very bummed at gem going home this week I, I wanted to see her actually really get to play i feel like she had a lot of those like villainous but fun villain elements that we want so badly and she was just cut down i hate to see it cut down with the very machete she was brandishing the entire day that was when she was <laughs> holding the machete was so funny i i, I love that Sasha, not only because, uh, you know, it's called back to like Amy from Micronesia, just like subtly wielding the machete. And she talked about how it just so happened that she's having these talks with Ben, like while she's about to dig up her idol. So like she wasn't purposely carrying around a sharpened and large blade the entire day to, to get her point home. But Ben in response, like covets this hammer to the point where he's sleeping with it on his chest. Like there's going to be a break in and this is his frying pan to try to take down any home intruders. I just thought it was so funny because in Jem's exit interview, right? Like she specifically says, oh, I realized I was holding it. So I was trying not to, you know, come off as aggressive, whatever. Baby, what is Jem going to do to Ben? Like, stop this. There's 20 cameras around Ben. Like, just be serious for one second, right? Please. Where this poor lady is just trying to do math in my, my worst <laughs> nightmare. Literally. Okay? Math. <laughs> on the island with not maybe her foot not a hand but a damn machete and then this man is like let me be thor real quick right because guess what thor could be a machete i just know it be so for real yeah do you it's think like, we do we need like an on island game called like rock machete hammer <laughs> <laughs> where oh I guess uh, machete probably beats hammer, but rock beats machete, but hammer beats rock. 
Yeah, and I think it depends how you use it, right? Like rock can hurt you much faster. Like I just throw a rock. I mean, all you have to like come yeah. at me with the machete. But I think instead of rock, it should be like flint. And then fire. it's like, uh, fire. Yeah, yeah. Mich- lit, yeah. Yeah. fire. Lit torch. <laughs> yeah, lit torch. Yeah. Your torch. <laughs> yeah. It's just like, uh, listen, I guess, could Ben have then theoretically, instead of holding the hammer, could he have just like stuck a stick in the fire and just started <laughs> waving it in front of him? That, <laughs> that would be just as like sensical as what he did. Because <laughs> in what universe is anyone going to, like if someone was going to go wild with the machete, I think it would stop long before they, you know, used it. It's so ridiculous. What do you mean you're scared? Stop it. <laughs> I just couldn't stop. Like, it's so silly. And listen, I get it. Like, I'm not on the actual island. Like, you're thinking about, you're like, oh, this person has a machete. It's a lot. But at the end of the day, you're like, well, maybe it would be a good TV moment. And, you know, I know it's not going to hurt me, right? Like, especially in all the reality shows I like to watch where people actually do try to fight each other. No one ever connects because there's always security around so it's to me it's not actually happening so you just i want the moment put me on camera and let me let me hold a machete and to threaten be, people to be fair ben is a florida man so i think he is used to sleeping <laughs> oh. with like a ball bean hammer on the side of the bed fair. okay well, and it's also like think about if you've ever gotten into an argument with someone while you're like cooking dinner and you're just sitting like sitting there with the knife in your hand like you don't mean to look scary but like you've got a knife in your hand oh if don't jem if off. jem uh justin from bb2 to ben do you think she'd get it eliminated yes <laughs> oh my <laughs> god that only works I, in early listen, if if cbs will remove you from the game for it in what 2002 they'll yeah. certainly remove you can you imagine you how bad things have to be in 2000 to get removed from a right. game <laughs> You have to literally hold a knife to someone's throat and say, what if I killed you right now? Oh, my God. And there, there isn't, like, camera men and security to, like, immediately intervene. So at least they had time to worry then. Yeah, that's that's a good point, Sasha, because you talk about, you know, obviously watching, like, Bad Girls Club is a good example of, like, having on-site security. Yeah. Did Survivor have, like, one guy standing there next to the cameras, like, just in case? Wait, do they not? not, No. They probably just have the camera guys walking around, because it's not like, like, in Survivor, they're only physically fighting when it's a challenge, and they have to, like, get a ball from each other. But what about the one time they really wish that they had it, you know? That well, there have been already at least five times that they should have had it. Um, <laughs> all you're talking about this is the worst season of Survivor. Be serious. Um, but all I just have to say, I feel that I am a hangry human, mm. and if you piss me off, I'm even worse. So I'm just I would personally not try to fight people because that take a lot of energy out of me, and like you know, food is scarce, but. If I'm mad enough, am I trying to like push you in the fire a little bit at least? Oh my god! So this bit. is why Sasha hasn't been on Survivor <laughs> because she wants. Well, to be- Asian. Oh, I'm I, I disagree. Anyway. If worry. you say oh, this on a Survivor oh, application, oh, like there's a non-zero chance they're like, oh, okay, she has some fight in her. She's got Listen, a little bit of oomph. Well, that's it's you true. never know what they count as a pass on the psych evaluation, right? <laughs> like you just there's gotta take enough. it. They don't. You don't have to actually be sane. Yeah. Oh my god, I can't. Uh, well, Sasha, I know you were certainly uh, mourning the loss of Jem over the course of this episode. Give me your thoughts about this episode overall. Was, do you feel like this was an upswing in the season for you? I, okay, it's filthy Survivor casual. So for me... Oh, how'd you do on the logo game? Listen, you know me. I literally texted Kirsten, Mike, before this podcast, and I was like, what if we had to rank the Survivor season? I was like, I, I just end the call. <laughs> You Jelinski it, you'd be like, nope, I'm done. Period. Okay, I've been here for several minutes. Look, it's nine minutes already. I'm here. I'm good. (laughs) All right, I'm gone. But no, I just, I personally, like Kirsten, enjoy the people, right? Like, that's Mm -hmm. why I'm here. So, Panu is not necessarily, like, amazing, beautiful, perfect in strategy-wise, right? 
But I'd be damned if people drag him because he was the moment for these past seasons, these past, sorry, episodes. And everyone seems to like enjoy him because, again, people have to understand you have to appreciate the mess. If I was on a tribe with Banu, I don't know what's happening. Okay, it's a whole different story. I'm no Q. So I, he might be pushed here and there a little bit by me, even though he's like triple my height. It don't matter. But I just, but as a viewer, I just, I love silly people on mm-hmm. TV. Like, I think that everyone being game pots isn't fun. And again, I just, and he's Indian, right? Like, there is a little bit of a bias. Uh, for me but I just I enjoyed him and I don't care He's he was still an early boot so people need to get mm-hmm. over it but either way such a funny guy and it's just been a silly season yeah. but can I just say this has nothing to do with like this season but casting in general when are we going to cast like rich bratty immigrants you know mm-hmm. what I mean like I'm tired like the, the trauma right enough we've heard it and we've heard it again, and we've heard it again. Um, and their stories deserve to be told. Don't get me wrong; I'm not minimizing anyone's story. But like, India isn't just right, or South Asia, because we've had Nasir, we've had right. Hanu, Jem, twenties. Um, yeah, the twenty. Right? Like, I'm just like, <sighs> let's let's talk about these like South Bombay girls that are like, what do you mean? Uh, you don't have maids in your house in America because that's a normal to me. And I have three a day, actually. So th- th- cast more spoiled people, okay? I'm but tired like, of these Are spoiled people applying for Survivor is the question. I mean, there's a difference between, I think, like spoiled person and someone with a lot of disposable income. I yeah, mean, that's li- what they like, do. You need that's more like Liz, Liz's, but with yes. the story. Yes. Like, I'm tired of, like, hearing about the immigrants that are struggling. Is that, I don't, I hope not to sound callous. I just mean, it's just giving, like, a one note to no. South Asia. Yeah, well, no, it's, it's almost like they're using yeah. immigrants so that they can tell a traumatic story rather than accepting that these people who've immigrated to America are human beings in their own right. Exactly. You know, it's like. Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, I just, you know, that's my goal one day. Someone somewhere get cast and that you are just Liz. But like, again, like I said, a day. Yeah. Wait, want- I don't wait. It's only a million dollars. I don't need that. Yeah. yeah like, oh, what? okay. Mm. A million dollars? All right. That's well, that's, a that's million just US stri- dollars? This just goes straight into one of my mutual <laughs> funds. <laughs> it's like people who have so much money that they never have to pay taxes, you know? Yes. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. And I bet, and what, what else they got going on in their life? Nothing. So they, they probably do want to apply for these shows because. Indian Big Brother is all celebrities and they go on the full time. Like it's okay, a long but Big Boss tour. is one of the most unhinged shows the in ever. the entire world. Like that's what I I'm saying. To... Cast Big Boss people on Survivor. I... That's mm. all I'm saying. There's I only have one memory. I one of my old coworkers used to every day she would explain to me what happened on Big Boss the day before. <laughs> and then I would tell her what was going on on American Big Brother. It was like our, our oh, ritual yeah, on our love box. And there was this one guy who literally threw a bucket of his own urine on another player and that's the only thing that like stuck and in these my are celebrities and they would like very oh my yes, God. they'll like let people leave the house to go to their court yeah. appearances and then come back <laughs> is there is, is big boss twitter like uh oh i miss the days of village remember when that one guy <laughs> threw his piss on the other celebrity no, they like put him every... in solitary confinement i think and he mm-hmm. used that time to fill up <laughs> no every season is unhinged the, the the iconic puja what is this behavior is from big boss oh yes okay. so it's just there's always some nonsense going on so that's what i'm saying like those mm. kinds of people i would also like to represent india that's all i'm saying yeah that that makes total sense uh well let's talk about what befell poor gem here and I mean, it's interesting to have someone go out at their first tribal council with an idol in their pocket. I was trying to do some deep dip- digging into Survivor history. I think it's only been done three times at this point. It's like oh my God. Jem, Chris Noble, and Aubrey from Edge of Extinction. Uh, and so it's giving iconic. <laughs> yeah, well, but I think it's interesting though is like all of those instances happened in either the late pre-merge or at the mm-hmm. merge in the form of Chris Noble. So I do wonder if there is something to like kind of resting on safe for most of the pre-merge that by the time you get to your first tribal council, you're like, 
oh, it's right there. I'm safe enough. I don't need it. Well, I, I, and it's been talked about like to death over the seasons that when you don't go to tribal council, you haven't reinforced your trust with anybody, right? And so I think when you have that idol and you feel safe and you've never had to trust, like test your trust with anyone, maybe in the back of your brain, you're like, no, it's fine. Like I, I'm good because I already feel safe because of this idol. When in reality, it's like, just use the idol. You've been safe for so long. You have this idol. You should just use it just to be safe. And here's the thing. We get 90 minutes. We get a salsa segment. Why are we not getting a here's why we voted Jem out? Or here's why we don't trust Jem from Maria, who used a damn advantage. They were already up 3-2, mind you. And then, oh, my God, it's just like nail in the coffin to get mm -hmm. her ass again. Yeah. Already dead. Yeah, I think Maria has sort of alleged uh, on mm -hmm. social media that apparently, like, the extra vote put a pretty big target on her back. Like everyone, oh, yeah. everyone, including Jem herself was like, oh yeah, I wanted Maria to use the extra vote to flush it. And I understand it, but also I'll admit a little bit of that is on Maria herself. Cause remember in that first episode, she comes back from the journey and it's like, here's every single thing that mm -hmm. happened. And now I have an extra vote that we can use as opposed to like Tevin who pulls the Ben before the Ben goes to his tribe and is saying, oh yeah, I may have an extra vote. I might not. We don't find out until tribal council. And so I think because of that, it does seem like, and this is against your point, Sasha, kind of reading between the lines that everyone was looking at Maria kind of sideways for just having an extra vote. And so she's like, sort of like what we're advising Jen to do a bit, which is like, just get it out of your hands as quickly as you can so people don't have to worry about it in yeah. the merge. I just came. Okay, I think it's different. And here's why. Because the idol is like, that keeps you in the game. You're good. What, are they going to vote her out because they think she's not going to use the extra vote? No, nobody was going to vote her out. Keep that vote. People are so scared of you that they want you to flush it. Be scared. I've got an extra vote. What are you going to do about it now that we're down to five? That extra vote is gets more powerful, you know, as time goes on. Yeah. And is that why, right, they maybe had kept Tim around or didn't vote for him because right. they're like, he has the idol, quote unquote. Wait, which was so <laughs> wild when we, after the challenge, when they're like, oh, uh, we as Nami will ask for volunteers. And Tim's like, I'll go. Was this an instance where like he was, he called dibs and no one else at Sega spoke up? Otherwise, like if you're any of the women, honestly, how do you let this guy go there? Because the entire reason why Ben gets targeted over him and maybe a reason why Charlie doesn't uh side with the women and ends up voting out Jem alongside maria is because they assume tim got something from the journey yeah that's what i'm saying it's just even the idea of something kept one person safe and then hurt the other person that actually had the something so listen why aren't we lying more what what's going on okay. the vibes tribe and, and get up stand up I will say, though, uh, this episode had me stunned. And I see your point very valid, Sasha, that, like, sometimes the show does trade off in audience surprise for, like, actually explaining through the logic of what happened. And there still is a bit of a hole in Maria's logic in particular, considering that she does say verbatim in the episode, like, oh, I have a deeper trust with the women than I do with Ben and Tim. But I thought it was Ben by a mile me too before, before the votes were being read just because mm -hmm. like we got so much personal information from him going back to the the file photos and the the montage back in like episode two or three he's been a big focal part people have already started to talk about how big of a threat he was from the beginning of the episode he even got one of those like oh I'm having such a great time on survivor type of ominous quotes and so I got to give credit to the show, I guess, to completely have me swindled over the course of an hour and 25 minutes. Yeah, I just I couldn't believe it. And and that's what I'm not entirely mad because, listen, I love Jim and I was very sad, but I did have the the moment right where you're like, what do you mean? What? Why? Huh? How? Mm -hmm. And and you got me. And you know what? I, I can't take that away from the editors. Right. Like. I understand why you did it. I just don't like it. And I hope next week episode gives me a detailed breakdown of yeah, what happened. Flashback. Give us some sort of conversation that actually really spells it out. Mm -hmm. Something I want to ask about Jem in general is, you know, there is this sort of odd paradox where 
she went out on the first tribal council she attended, but like the previous 11 days she spent, she was not certainly playing like she was safe from tribal council every single time. And you talk about like, just play the damn idol. I can only imagine Jeb being like, Hey, yeah, so uh, I found this, and then I also re-hit it so you all would dig a hole to the center of the Earth. Sorry, my bad. Kristen, how much do you think Jem's overplaying is the sole reason why we're talking about her today? I, I don't know if we can say it's the sole reason, because again, like we've already said, like they didn't give us enough context, but like... Yeah, she shouldn't have done that. <laughs> like, well, I remember just like every point of that, like playing out where she finds it, she rehides it, and she's giggling. Like, yes, I love that the evil giggles make them suffer beautiful. But then when they're digging for days and days and days or two days or whatever, Three there's, days. All the an- there's all the ants in the ground, they're getting bit by ants over it. It's like, I, I think in the moment when the ants came out, it was like, oh, wow, this really was, this was a big mistake. They are all getting attacked by insects because of me. Oh, my God. I Again, I I like it because it's not me and I get to watch it. But, boy, if I found out that Jem's ass did this to me <laughs> and it's been three days that I'm in the hole and a tribal, right, all of them are tribal council being like, was it tribal, right? Where they were like, we were digging and killed a tree. I can't remember. But Charlie said that. But now I'm like, was that a tribal or beforehand? I can't remember. Doesn't matter. They were talking about it and they're like, no, no one would have done it, right? We killed oh, a yeah. tree. Yeah, Ben said at camp. He's it. like, oh, that'd be the dickest move ever. Yeah. And whenever they were talking about it, to me, that would be my reaction. Be like, it can't be, right? Because we did X. We, we dug a hole to Russia, right? Like, how? <laughs> how did they do that to us? Yeah, like, I don't know how you continue with the game after that. Like, in that case, you might need your idol. For, you better hope to go start digging again. You better start digging back in that hole, because chances are they might have found something in there besides uh, all the poop from three seasons ago. <laughs> oh, my God. That they, probably, they probably yeah. put another idol in there, uh, just because, like, you got to find something quick. Or as soon as you hit Mergatory, the other Sega members are just going to swarm everyone, like the ants that swarmed them a few days ago, being like, you will not believe the shit that Jim pulled on us. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> It's too much. It's it's literally, I don't know. I like to think that I would be that sort of insane person, but I I just don't think I would have it in me to have them dig in a damn hole. I would have to hate them, you know? Yeah, and like, and they, like, like, they didn't seem to hate each other. They seem yeah. to really all get along. So yeah. it, that's why it's so surprising. that she, Like, she'll do that to the people she likes. Imagine if there'd I be mean, someone she hated on the tribe. Yeah, it's tough, because on the one hand, I do think Jem kind of Dear Evan Hansen this, where, like, it, she started one thing, <gasps> and then it just kind of spiraled out of control. <laughs> Dear Evan Hansen! Oh, my God! <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Yeah, so she wore this really odd wig that made her look like she was like forty-seven. Uh, yeah, she's but, playing a high school. Yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, but but then she, to your point, like she's kind of reveling in it, right? And that's sort of is the fun stuff, the evil giggles, her being like, "Wow, I can't believe I'm actually getting away with lying this much," even though like her and Tim had, from what we've seen, the oddest relationship out there on the island. Where like they'll just start conversations, being like, "Oh, this is what I know about you. How about a good yeah. morning?" <laughs> And they're both what happened clocking. to hello? What yeah, no, but they're literally you? both clocking each other. That's my mm-hmm. favorite thing. And neither of them are wrong. That's I think I tweeted that, but I said it should be Jem and Tim, but it's Jem versus Tim. Yeah. And I hate that for me because they're so funny. He's like, So why'd you hide the idol? What happened? Why why'd you do that? <laughs> right. And she She's like me on Among Us because she's just like murder giggles, right? She just can't handle it. She's like, yeah, I did it. I killed him. And what? Oops. So she is really proud of herself, right? Gem is like, I didn't laugh. Usually I giggle. I feel felt that in my heart, right? She's like, I put on the best performance. You know Tim went and told everyone that she did it because she was giggling. Yeah. And in like, her I mind, know. she didn't do it. For a fact, she did it. She couldn't keep a straight face. It was clear. It was obvious. And Jem's like, I killed that interaction. Mm. Say magnifique. Give me yeah. the Oscar right now. Uh, I, honestly, you put this idea in my head, Sasha. I don't think I could think of a more recent reality TV cast that I want to see play a game of Among Us or yeah, Goose exactly. Duck than the cast of Survivor 46. Can you imagine, like, Banu 
Banu, Banu begging to be voted out. I, I need him. He's like, I meant to press this, and I press kill. You know? <laughs> no, me. and then he's like, he's like, God, why did you even put me in this lobby if I was going to get caught? <laughs> Uh, and then Why? just so Jelinski uh, gets like, you know, uh, one of the mafia or whatever. And like halfway through, was like, all right, I'm just going to admit this. Uh, I am in the mafia. Uh, I'm going to do you all a favor if you just vote me out right now. I think it'll be okay. I'll go. So it's like a game oh, favor with yeah. you for the next game. That'd be He's... such a good Dodo play for Jelinski. Yeah. <laughs> I beg he gets the Dodo because they're like, we just got to do it again for the meme. Vote his ass out again. No, he'd get the Dodo, but then he'd get killed by the other dueling Dodo. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, because he'd give he'd be like he'd be like trying to do his task. Yeah, and, uh, I don't want to do my no, task. Okay. He'd walk, he would walk up to the other person and they'd be like, Oh, what role are you? He's like, Well, I'm the dodo. And then the other dodo just kills him right there. Oh, this is the goodest scenario, actually. Now I kind of want to imagine everyone this from, from I'm 46 in the, Among Us Christmas deck. The thing is. At least some of these people will will likely get to play Goose Goose Do you, do you think so? I think Charlie would. I think yeah, Charlie, Charlie would. would. What did you think about Charlie at Tribal Council? <laughs> hmm. you, that's that's your fellow Stan. So I, I know it's uh it's it's a little weird though. It was a little odd where he's like Jeff. You know we're all just numbers and the equation hasn't been figured out yet. Like. I feel like people might say that a lot of this stuff is put on, which I honestly don't think that it is. This was maybe the first time where I felt it, where he kind of walked into tribal council, like a job interview where he's like, I've got these lines in my pocket. Let me pull them out. So maybe that's another advantage of going to tribal council often is this, it kind of beats down on that veneer of you <laughs> where as much as you try to make things like analogy heavy and trying to shine up those apples for the teacher, like eventually you just got to let the fruit be fruit. Meanwhile, Jem is saying, let me vote you. <laughs> <laughs> let me vote you jeff like what is this yeah can i vote you and jeff's oh, wait jeff said in this moment no you can't vote me i'm here forever <laughs> jeff said he is going to be like is that like purgatory i, I don't understand do you think jeff has bought a plot for his like after like, his right? urn is gonna yeah. sit next to the one they put the I think votes I think his urn, yeah, I think it's gonna be the voting urn. I think they put their votes into Jeff Probe's ashes. Oh Honestly, my god. Yeah. They I'm use his them. ashes to create the pens to that you vote with. Ooh. Yeah, I think honestly what you do is you like Jeff Probst is this universal organ donor and you kind of just it's like that movie Seven Pounds, right? Yeah, where they kind of like give it. each of his body parts away, you know? <laughs> you know what? You could have told me there was gonna be a movie comparison today, <laughs> and with a thousand guesses, I would not have gotten seven pounds. No, sorry, oh, several me. pounds. Several oh, right. Right. Seven a classic yeah. mistake. A classic. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well a, a couple of other things i want to talk about before we get into our usual b and b fair i mean let's talk about yanu here by far the brightest they have seemed this entire time around and i mean can we talk about that slow-mo shot it was beautiful i Incredible. like i got chills i legitimately was like do i have goosebumps right now <laughs> So I think I am the villain edit because I was like, no, but I do want to see them. Like, what happens? You know, like, let them go again. I, this is fun. But I think it's I think it's more fun that they get this little reprieve and they get a little bit of sustenance before they have to turn on each other. Well, I, are they going into the merge? Yeah, is, it, is that what's... Yeah, so next up is is mergatory. Yeah, so see, like I would have loved for it to just be to one, to two. like one tribe just getting so dissolved that when they go into merge, they're just like all of a sudden the swing vote, Tiff and Kenzie make it to the end. Like that's how I saw it for them, and I was like, he was gone. Like he already mm. wants to quit. I I couldn't believe they actually did it. I thought the slow mo was okay. No, wait. Walk with me here. Always. Jeff becomes right here. sassy, correct? Uh, Jeff okay. goes, I thought you were going to say the losers, a.k.a. Yanu, but y'all said losers, right? He's already dragging them. He's yeah, which already... is wild because I I think he was trying to pick up on what they put down in episode two, yes. right? Of like, oh, how's that? How's your food? Like, oh, yeah, you all like to talk trash, right? And Jeff mm -hmm. gets in it like four rounds too late. But it's also like way meaner when Jeff does it because it's like you 
Why are you punching down Jeff Probst, who gets to go have your linen shirt ironed before every appearance and can have whatever food he wants? Yeah, but that shirt's going to be divided amongst all the castaways after he dies. Like, that's the reward that the winner scraps of his shirt. Well, Well, thankfully, he probably has a different one for each day of the week. Well, it's in his will, actually. (laughs) So that's what's going to happen. But the point is sassy Jeff, right? And then they do the slow mo. I said, that is perfect. They played them at the start. Now they're about to play them at the end where they're going to do the slow-mo and he misses because Jeff already called them losers. And then it goes to Sega where Tim actually hits him. But no, I was wrong. And the, the setup was, oh, we proved you all wrong. It's great because I like all of them. So I'm not actually mad um, that any of them are, you know, still in the game. But as the Voldemort, as the villain, I would have been like, that would have been really funny. <laughs> I that I think it is funny, but it's also just they've been so beaten down seeing them sit there with the rain literally coming through the tarp and hit mm-hmm. it, like hitting them. Like Q is just laying under the cliff on the ground. Yeah, because like, he oh, says this even is even better the, than the bamboo. Even the thought of bamboo drives them up the wall. I get it. I just have you. To be so fed up with one thing and it's just not changing. You're just like, yeah. I voted out all the people I could vote out. Now what to do? Nothing. Give them the flint, man. I th- that uh, is yeah. horrible. Yeah. Even I don't want to see people suffer like that. Like, it's not fun to see people struggle like this. I mean, this is where I'm like, give them the flint. Give them the damn rice. Like, I, it's so boring to watch people who have no, like, energy at all because they can't, like, they can't even move to try and find some coconuts because they're so depleted. Like, let them eat. It's like how on on Big Brother I find the have-nots to be very annoying because all it's just like, okay, a third of the house is too tired to move. Awesome. Like, give them, like, uh, yeah, it's Survivor. You don't have to give them, like, a four course meal or like even like a full meal or that much food, but like give them enough to, to move and strategize just, just like a little bit. Yeah, I completely agree. And it seems like, you know, I don't think it's too coincidental that we've had, I think four out of the six seasons of the new era, we've had like one tribe go to tribal council at least three times in the pre-merge. And most of them went like three times in a row, at least, just because Mm -hmm. there's this idea of it's a race in a manner of speaking. And like, if you fall behind and also while you keep getting depleted and losing out on fire, your competitors are still getting rest and getting well-fed because they have fire. So they're Mm -hmm. performing even better than mm-hmm. you possibly could like it makes what Yanu was able to pull off in this episode astounding because yeah. they were so beaten down they had gone the longest without flint out of any tribe really in survivor history and so the fact that they were able to actually pull this off is incredible but it doesn't really need, we don't need to get to that extent you know i think we want to yeah. see people go to tribal council in the pre-merge look what we got out of this episode right like the fact that Sega got to go to tribal council made this episode, in my opinion, and mm-hmm. we would we would have been able to get that perhaps a bit earlier in the season if they had been able to even do, hey, bring your torches back to camp and use them to light the fire or just give them the flint after their first tribal council, you know, and then then you can take it back after they lose an immunity challenge. Yep. But just give them that literal spark, give them that mm-hmm. encouragement to know they can do it because they are just completely will be gotten up until they win the challenge like they had won that reward challenge which also i think just give them the freaking flint then isn't that enough of a reward I, I wonder if in the moment they could have been like we're gonna give all this away like no tarp no yeah uh, i thought that was gonna yeah. happen no no fishing mm-hmm. if you give us the flint right here and now i don't think jeff would take the deal because again he's very hard and fast about this rule but might have been worth the try and why are they doing a separate award challenge in the first couple of weeks in a three tribe season? Like I, it's way better to have just one challenge in the episode. They get a reward with their immunity. And then we can see a little bit more of that camp life to actually understand what's going on. Why, why did I have to watch two challenges last week? For what reason? I mean, to help Yanu get, you know, a brief glimpse of hope before they get pulled back down by the gravity <laughs> of their own ineptitude bless their heart Love their own ineptitude i know like from the top rope at this point <laughs> i also have to say do you think like sitting out 
the right people also was part of this like winning well, Yanu's win and Siga's loss because they had to play Maria and Jem yeah. uh, and Tim and Maria, it from what the edit seemed like, did take the longest to hit her target, which kind of, you know, caused this like waterfall down. Yeah. But I wonder if Charlie was in it, even, yeah, just one person because Jem hit her target first. So Charlie was first instead of Maria, right? Would that have changed anything? Yeah, um, it's, it's a good question. I mean, and I guess. Yeah. We got to thank Claire from season 44 for this, right? That it made Jeff, Jeff now institute this rule of no back-to-back -back sit out. So now, Ooh. as you mentioned, like Maria and Jem were forced to play in this one. And even though Siga got out to a sizable lead, they Maria in particular, who unfortunately has kind of had these moments of standing out in challenges for not so good reasons, they were able to fall behind a bit to allow Q to like just sneak out that win. Mm hmm. That's mm -hmm. that's what I also was like noticing that is there some dynamic that the losing tribe, you know, maybe has like not an advantage, but at least, you know, that these are the three people that, you know, somehow are the strongest left. And for Yanu, it definitely, I think, is these are the three strongest um, versus I think the others <laughs> where they're just like now they got to play their weakest and then hopefully you get that one, you know, shot to yeah. win. Yeah, well, regardless, I am very happy for them. Uh, not only, again, did it give more time for us to see the rest of the cast. I don't want to say actually play the game because I feel like that's kind of a damning term. Like, it's clear from Jem's journey that she was certainly doing a lot of stuff before going to Tribal Council. But, like, so much of the game is predicated on, okay, you can only trust someone so much until you put pen to parchment. And we saw this here where, again, the narrative that had been built up for five episodes was like, okay, it's the men versus the women. And now we got to see through this vote, like, maybe not so much. Charlie's Angels had an early cancellation here. Kristen, <laughs> are, are you foreseeing anything, like, in particular from the merge? Maybe especially due to, like, this sort of uh, brochachos plus one thing that was made on the journey? Uh, I really, I mean, I hope not, because they're like, okay, let's do the brigade um but with one from each tribe which i'm not particularly interested in watching go down um but i mean i i think more than anything i think q is gonna get thrown under the bus because he goes on that journey and says okay we're the three big guys let's all work together and we'll each bring in a layer to this onion alliance and i also think when they i can't remember who specifically asked they said Oh, and would Tiffany be your person? Mm. And when he said yes, I feel like the air kind of was pulled out of the room. I think they wanted him to say that he would bring Kenzie into the alliance. I I don't really know why. I just got that vibe. I mean, that's tough, though, because Q knows that Banu openly told basically both tribes that Tiffany yep. and Q are close. So, like, when you do that, then the air also kind of leaves the conversation because they're like, oh, I know you're lying then. Yeah, I just think he was so out in front there proposing a strategy to people who have so many more people to work with yeah. and who they haven't voted yet. So they don't really know if they don't have people that they can trust. So, you know, he Q did what he had to do, but I think it's going to come back on him more than anyone else. I also, if you see two guys going on the journey and you're Tiffany and Kenzie, who are pretty smart, were you like, you, I, I need you to sit this one out. Um, I think one of us are going to go, uh, actually, because I Q is a type, right, to, to get with the bros and do the bros alliance. And I'm looking at, there's already two bro -y bros going. Mm -hmm. I can't let Q go. Yeah, so I think yeah. the only we thing would have would never. Say, yeah, I guess like maybe they'd say, "Oh, Tiffany, you already have an idol, so you shouldn't go." Oh, even though. right. And then, Ke and then I think Q would be like, "Kenzie, you're definitely not going because I don't want you getting anything." So this might have been again another like Caleb situation where he's like, "Nope, I'm doing it." Dibs, I'm not doing. I don't want to even look, <laughs> think about the bamboo back at camp. So please get me, just put me on the sand where I can just tell Hunter go do this. Mm -hmm. uh, I I do agree though that I think. Like, I don't bemoan Q for doing this whatsoever. I think this was the move for him to do. And this is something yeah. he expressed to me, like, already days before in the preseason of him being like, yeah, I basically need to know I need to surround myself with meat shields. Because Venus is openly telling Hunter that he's a meat shield. Like, Q's the, love him. the meat sword at this point. Uh, because oh, no. Find another word. 
<laughs> no, I, I like didn't it. Have it. Heard I like it. What, should I Google it just to see if it's safe? Oh my god. <laughs> um, you better do it in incognito mode. I think that's a reward they should offer. Instead of this saying like, oh, you get kebabs, say like, oh, you get some nice, delicious, dripping, wet meat swords. No, why did you say wet? That is what ruined it. Where's Liana when you need her? Where's mother? Her. Oh, she knows she'd approve of wet meat swords. <laughs> oh my god, everyone. Anyways, do gotta not go. ever call them kebabs again. <laughs> nope, that's the that's the now I cannot have a barbecue anymore. Period. Because I'm not the... going to call them like who wants a plate of wet meat swords? Why is is it that... wet? <laughs> no, I I think that is now the BNB's like official uh, menu item. That's right? like room the number service. one. Room yeah, service, call up. Hi, right? I need a wet meat sword. And they're they're gonna be <laughs> so disappointed meaning. by someone just walking in with meat and vegetables on a plate. <laughs> Uh, just walking in, like you know how the bottle girls walk in with the <laughs> bottle. <laughs> Yeah, we need the meat sword men. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. <laughs> but oh, I, I do no. think that, uh, you know, I, I think that Q is trying to find something new, knowing that they are going into a mergatory 553. And, like, in mergatory especially, it can easily be a matter of you're on the losing side and, like, you're someone who doesn't have someone else speaking up for them. We've seen that happen with, like, Sydney, with Lydia, with a bunch of people. This might be a situation with the Yanus as well, where, like, Hell, it nearly happened with Caleb last season where, hey, he didn't really have a lot of bonds with people. And so they're like, oh, yeah, let's just get rid of Caleb. That's the easy thing to do. And so I, I appreciate you trying to extend this brand. But to your point, Kirsten, it's tough when like Tim and Hunter have had the you know luxury of getting to sit and just branch out for the entirety of basically half the game. And so they're like, yeah, sure. I don't know if I necessarily want to do this and go to the end with a bunch of people that could win challenges over me, but sure, we'll entertain this. Yeah, I mean, who is saying no? You should never say no to an alliance, period. But also, yeah, who am I doing it with? Yeah. Who, are they helping me more than I'm helping them, right? Like, what? what is the well, back and forth here? Look at, l- listen, Q was training Banu on what to do. Mm-hmm. And he, he had a, an idea and Banu said, yes, I want to do that. He said, too fast. He agreed to it too fast. But now, Q, you got off the boat and you immediately proposed mm-hmm. an alliance with these two people you don't know. That's too fast. You yeah. take your own advice. Uh, you know what? I think he's he's one of those uh those that can't do teach people, right? <laughs> oh, <laughs> bless. I, I don't know. I, I think I think Q is in an okay place. I I thought you know he was well positioned on Yanu, but things might flip. Uh, I could even see like Q and Venus basically having like the exact same landing spot that they did post merge in the pre merge, where Venus was someone that would have gone had Nami not had this like incredibly just like astounding and unassumed from the beginning winning streak that they won every single challenge except for one in which they came in second place. Uh, But had they lost any of those, she was gone. Now I think, yes, there might be some like personal grievances to air, but I don't think people are necessarily looking to her as this giant threat. She was someone that was probably the safest person on Yanu, especially as they kept losing like, okay, this is our anchor in the challenges. But now he's coming to the situation where now everyone's saying, oh, you're this anchor in the challenges. And so I would not be surprised to see, you know, the outcomes pretty much flip here where maybe Venus would have been the first booted and Q would make the merge. Q might be one of these first post-merge boots and we might see Venus as our winner. Oh, Imagine. would love to see it. Oh my God. Or the girlies, dream. please. And the thing too is it's like, like Venus contributed to those wins. She was not dragged along. Like in yes. the immunity challenge in this episode, she was whipping in and out of that structure, getting those bags like so fast. I was and she so hit impressed. the target pretty quickly, too. like um, almost immediately. It seemed mm-hmm. like that's the thing is that I have so much adoration for Nami as a group of personalities. But I'll admit, when I first saw those half dozen individuals, I'm like. Yeah, I think this is our disaster tribe. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just like Damn. a fun mixture of personalities, but like outside of Hunter, I don't know if I'm necessarily seeing like the requisite strength that we see in these premier challenges, but they became the most dominant tribe in new era history, which is wild to me. And I agree. It's not just Hunter, even though he has been amazing at a lot of stuff. Like 
you know, it's the whole sum of its parts. It's through all the stuff that all these people were participating, were doing. You know, we should give credit to Tevin and Venus as well, even in in that challenge. Uh, you know, I think even in the challenges that Soda and Liz participated in, they were not slouches whatsoever. Yeah. And so Nami was just this incredible, well-oiled machine while also simultaneously being this gaggle of really fun yeah. personalities, which I feel like we so rarely get on the show. They're so well-rounded, right? Like, I feel like they all have strengths that can fill in each other's kind of deficiencies yeah. that make them work so well. And honestly, sometimes rage can fuel you to perform well. So if you're mad, like, Venus is mad. People are not you know, seeing her as a person worthy of respect. Okay, well, I'll show you I'm worthy of respect. Yeah, I flabbergasted. Because, again, in a million years, I wouldn't pick this group, right, without a tribe swap, nothing. Mm. Just this group to be the the most dominant tribe. Like, it was giving Delulu, it was giving, right, like, you name yeah. it. Orange tribe, hot mess. And then I really said, oh, production set them up. You know, this is horrible. Why did the production do it? No. They I, they should sleep so good, each and every person on that tribe, even Randon included, to, you know, sleep so well. Well, watch out they, when he sleeps. He might I, wake up oh with something God. bad. That's true. But well, I just mean, like, they've got that sort of it's wild. Like, they are so dominant and... It, it's on me because I underestimated them. And yeah. I bet you the other tribes did too. And I that must be so frustrating for like someone like you who's, you know, hyper competitive, right? Like all these yeah. folks that are like, who's beating me? Them? Yeah. We're losing what to Liz. <laughs> Liz don't need the money. That's what I'm saying. She has nothing to lose. I, lo I love that was my favorite, like. Liz has these random low key moments in every episode. And I think that the one for me was her just like not caring about looking for the idol whatsoever. She's like, I'll probably lose it. Doesn't I matter. I can't even find my shoes. <laughs> Liz, so what? true. Relatable. Well, let's <laughs> start getting into our, our usual fare here on the BNB. &B, and let us start with our predictions for Jem. And Liana is in absentia, but. Much like Jeff Probst's organs, she does live on. She did write me a prediction to read. So uh, through her written prediction and mine, we'll see who is more on the money about Gem Money. So Liana had Gem making the jury. Uh, Liana said that Gem cruises through the pre-jury phase on social relationships and Sega's immunity dominance. This gives her free time to search for an idol, and she finds one. Hooray! However, to unlock the idol, she needs to convince her tribe mates to give up their shoelaces. She enlists Maria to help her, bringing her preseason promise to not tell anyone about her idol. When Jem got the idol, Marina turns on Jem at the merge, ratting out her shoelace idol to Kenzie. So her ally and her enemy were both Maria. Okay, okay, so Liana has screeners, is what you're telling me. A us. little bit, yeah, except for, uh, did she get a Nike ad in the middle of it? Well, I'm not you sure have to lie, you know what I mean? She had to, she can't totally give away that she knew what was going to happen. If someone came back from the journey and was like, I had to give up my shoelaces, would you believe them? It, uh, honestly, yeah, I'd believe anything. <laughs> like, this show does dumb stuff all the time now. So you're telling I mean, me you had to give up your shoelaces? Like, Got it. Bet the next idol is going to be hidden. It's going to be made of your shoelaces. I understand. We'd be confused as a goat on AstroTurf, right? Like, <laughs> you and me both. Well, they've used those shoelaces before to like tie together the sticks. So maybe, yeah. they said, oh, this is your disadvantage. You lose your flint and you lose your shoelaces for the next challenge. Oh my God. Be maybe serious. We're running it barefoot. Yeah, they should do like, uh, I'm thinking, God. This is going to be such a nerdy reference. The Samadhi from Endurance, uh, where you got it and it gave you a disadvantage, a very specific disadvantage in the next challenge where it's like, oh, you have to do this blindfolded or you they uh, chain your ankles together and you have to like, you can't run as well. They should do that instead of taking the flint. Yeah, something. You know what? I like that. A forfeit instead of like a full on. They give like a, a wheel of things that can you can give up. One of them is the flint. One of them oh. is like if you have a tarp, you lose a tarp. If you have like if you have to give up your machete, I don't know. Give mm -hmm. up your shoelaces. Uh all the glasses. Oh my yeah. god. Okay, that one's 
That's a little extreme. Be blind for real. Exactly. This is a, a, a blindfold challenge that you never thought was going to happen. Oh my god. Well, let's see if I was uh, as all-seeing as Liana, who definitely was not undergoing her own blindfold challenge with her guesses. I also had Jem making the jury. I said, despite her promise preseason to keep her jungle experience hidden, upon seeing how out of death Siga is, she steps up and becomes the tribe provider. Her position on the tribe translates to a great position strategically. Tim and her immediately get on as two of the Siga leaders, and Maria brings her in on a deal among the women. Uh, but no matter what she does, Jem's plans are delayed when Siga never goes to tribal council in the pre-merge. A la Jesse's checklist plan. Okay, I think I remember that. We'll get a scene of Jem's secrets of sales where she runs down tips and tricks for how to sell something as she applies said advice to throwing someone else under the bus. True to her love of Tony, Jem works hard to find an idol early on, and she also wins an extra advantage on the journey. Unfortunately, she keeps to her pregame word of not telling anyone about what she has. As a result, Yanu and Nami join together at the merge to take down the Siga block, with Jem being seen as the biggest threat. Because she's not given a tip, her name is even on the chopping block. She walks out with plenty of accessories in her pocket. And I said her closest ally was Tim, and her enemy was Nami and Yanu. Ooh. Okay. So I've combined, you guys have a lot of things, right? That's what I'm saying. I... But here's the thing. I've been on the BNB a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I voted for Liana every single day. I don't know if I've ever voted for Mike. Wow. All right. And then we're going to run the voting record. Like and I, I don't know if I'm ready to start voting against Liana. <laughs> oh, You're the Sasha being like, oh, I, want him to, I want him to keep losing. I want him to keep experiencing yeah. this. I, uh, I think you, because I think putting Tim as the closest ally is just like, that's what I think a little killed too, it for me. A little too much. Was that my cue moment of saying that I should work with <laughs> Tiffany? Yeah, 100%. That's exactly right. <laughs> oh um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I would like to vote for Liana. Sasha, what do you think? I think, I'm, yeah. I think the Nike deal is so funny also, right? <laughs> where, where we're just like, what do you mean shoelaces, Liana? Like, why has that been what we've picked versus the Tim piece? Because I think Tim is just so against her. Yeah. And I just want to know if Tim was the one, right, that led the re rebellion against her, which I, I just feel like, because he clocked her ass so good. Yeah, uh... I'm like that, Tim. I hated that. So that's why I keep thinking that I can't I can't vote for you that's because a... Tim is so with her. Honestly, Liana's power. She didn't even show up to the podcast and we're still like, we would die for her. Yeah. Sorry. I should, have said, I should have said it with like uh, a funny voice or like yes. fart noises in between every sentence. Just to, I like, appreciate that. Try to muddy the message a little bit. <laughs> yep. A hundred percent. We're been like, oh, Liana, what is this? Well, the good news for me is... Maybe I have a way of crafting some revenge. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. In a very, oh, uh, yeah, we're screwed. <laughs> quite literally, Kenzie Petty season, as this tends to be. Because here's the thing we're about to experience mergatory next week, where a bunch of faces tend to, you know, meet, greet, perhaps size each other up as their best friends or their worst enemies for the second half of the game, and generally just mix together. And so it's only appropriate that perhaps we play a game. That mixes some faces together. Oh no! Oh, you're both you're both Big Brother fans, so what? we thought. Oh no! We'd put you through a little face morph competition. It's oh, curtains, buddy. For us. Sasha and I are two of like probably the most casual Survivor fans on the network. Well, the good news is it's only amongst the castaways of Survivor 46. Oh, okay, okay. You know what? Uh, listen, I don't... <laughs> so here's and when how... Liz and Mariah are in the same picture. Yeah, it's just going to be a picture of Liz, and you're like, oh, Liz and Mariah and Kenzie. <laughs> so here's how this is going to work, and this is all kudos to Sean, uh, who started this game last season and did the very fine Photoshop work that you're going to experience today. So I am going to put up a photo that mixes together the features of three okay. Survivor 46 castaways. Got it. So here's the thing. 
one of them is going to be the body. Like one of them is going to be very oh, obvious. Okay. One of them is going to okay. be a given. So that will sort of be like your chalk pick. It will not count towards anything. Okay. We'll have you both go. We won't go back and forth on this one. You'll both have a chance with each one to write down your answers. If you get one of the other two people, I will give you one point. If you get the other person as well, making sure you got all three of the individuals that are mixed into the photo, I will give you three points. Okay, so basically okay. you get a two point bonus for being able to find that third person. Uh, got it. So, and again, it's only amongst the castaways of Survivor 46. So you have are 18 you faces to worry thank about. Thank God, because I was like, ain't no way. <laughs> it's I even still, I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Me, we can try. We, this We're gonna like, try. Of course, I'm telling myself. Listen, yeah. this is what Yanu is all about, right? Like, even if you feel like you're coming up against a brick wall, you just keep on trying, and eventually, you're able to slingshot your way through. Correct. Correct. Okay, let's do it. I'm okay. excited. Yeah, let's not move <laughs> in slow motion. Uh, let's move forward here, and I'll post some of these photos as well uh, for people that are not watching the video version of this. You can go to bit.ly/facemore46 to follow along and see if you get the same number or even more right than these two ladies. Probably more. <laughs> let's be clear. So let's start with the woman of the hour and a half. Let's start with Jem. <laughs> oh my, I need to make this bigger on my screen. Make, make, make it bigger on your screen. So bad. So this is Jem, and it is also the facial features of two other Survivor 46 contestants. Okay. Hmm. So if if I were to describe this to people, honestly, it kind of looks like Nick Kroll a little bit in the face. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit in the face. Oh, <laughs> yeah, because like, okay, I have a question. Always, yes. Um, will the colors of the person be changed? Like Gem is yes. obviously a brown woman. Yes. But so could these, it be someone else's? Yeah. I was a say, white person. <laughs> yeah. So just as a hint, yeah, you should not necessarily to n expect to match up like with like. I think Sean was oh, able to shit. do enough okay. of a job, even though there might be some times where maybe that will be a bit of the exception. Uh, but sometimes, yeah, it, it will blend in relatively well. Oh, I can't get the third. <sighs> yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna just throw a guess in. Um, yeah. Uh, I might not even have any of them. This is the problem. All right. Well, Kirsten, we'll um, start with you because uh, you've you've uh, written, locked in something before, Sasha. So we know that Jem is one of the three people in this photo. Who are the other two? Okay. I think Jelinski. Oh, I didn't. Oh, and damn. I, uh, and then I just wrote Randon. I don't know. Okay, Jill, okay. What, did you see any specific part of the face or body that read Jelinski to you? I thought that was his nose. Is that not his nose? We'll see. Sasha, who did you write down? Wait, I put Panu and Tim. All right. Sasha gets one point out of <gasps> this round. Wow. So uh, Panu, but... So, yeah, I believe it's Banu's mouth. I yeah, the say. mouth for sure yeah. I knew. And this I is, thought it was Tim's eyes. And no, this is uh I believe it's the the nose of soda. Oh, oh that was my other guess. Damn, I should have okay. Yeah, it was between soda and Tim for me. Listen, oh, I was dude. lost. I was lost in the sauce, and that's okay. That's why I asked the color question. <laughs> yeah, see, I I was like, oh perfect. She's asking my question because I thought it was Jelinski's. Yeah. Well, let's see. Again, Sasha's only one point ahead. So, Kirsten, mm -hmm. you can still make up some ground. I'm still in it. I'm still exactly. in it. Yes, yes. And maybe this next face will do you some good. <laughs> this is a <laughs> bit more of a gimme. Uh, yeah. So, I, I wanted to, you know, get you in with the most recent boot. And now we can sort of put the training wheels back on. So, this, of course, is Randon. But okay. what yeah. are the other two castaways featured in this photo? Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Uh, and I would say that this photo of Randon obviously looks like Randon, but kind of made up like he works in a dispensary, I think, <laughs> or like, oh like between God. that winning smile and obviously the hair and the, the bandana to match. Yeah, I like this. <laughs> All right. Sasha, you got your names? Yes. Um, I have Randon, Liz, and Tim. Randon, Liz, and Tim. Okay, Kirsten, what about you? Okay, well, I've Randon, Tim, and Mariah. 
because I okay. couldn't remember the hair. Okay. <laughs> the head is ta- uh, Liz. Yeah, so Kirsten will get one point. But Sasha Joseph, you got all three correct. Yeah. It is indeed Queen. Brandon. It is Tim Smile. And it is the lovely mop top with the shambo matching headband of one, the, the one and only, as she calls herself, Liz. Tim's the yeah. only one with a beard just next. Well, yeah, that yeah. exactly. That's why <laughs> I was like, okay, I think it's Tim and Liz. Yeah. All right. Next up here. Now things are not going to be so easy. Oh, gosh. and things are maybe going to get a little more uncanny valley. Oh no! This is already. Oh. Ah! (laughs) So here's Jelinski. You might not recognize him, but here he is. (laughs) Oh my god! This is a a horror. This is um so terrifying. Yeah. So Um... to describe this to people. God, it's like the the one person you don't want to bump into at Bonnaroo. (laughs) This is like you see someone, this person walking towards you and you cross the street. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Oh, God. Okay, I'm trying to... I feel like his eyes are following you wherever you go. That's what I'm saying, and that's what's throwing me off because I can't look at them too long, but I have to. All right, Kirsten, yeah, are you circling around a couple um, of guesses at this point? Okay, I think. Uh, uh, I... I think I have something if Kirsten needs a yeah, little Sasha, bit. Yeah, give, give me one moment. Go ahead, Sasha. Yes, okay, I put Hunter, Jelinski, and Venus. Hunter, Jelinski, and Venus, Kirsten? Because the eyes. What yeah, okay. No, but I literally wrote down Hunter and Venus, and I was like, oh, the eyes kind of look like Venus. Yeah. And then I had just crossed it out, but then I was called on before (laughs) I could think of something else. So I'm going to still say that was my answer, because I didn't write anything Okay, so you're both locking in on Hunter and Venus, the two that all also had their kind of, like, own Tim and Jem conversation (laughs) this time, where, like, Hunter says, oh, do I need to look for the idol? And Venus is like, well, yeah, people want to get rid of you because you're a threat. He's like, wait, are you saying you want to get rid of the... No, you're my meat shield, which is like maybe not the best follow up answer, but okay. Venus. I mean, I think it's a fine follow up answer considering they don't have like as much of a relationship. Like, at least that's yep. something better than being like, yeah, I want to vote you out. Get the I- you better get the idol or I'm voting you out. Yeah, exactly. Which gives them even more initiative to be like, oh, damn, golly, let me go find this thing. <laughs> no, uh, golly. Lose my vote for the third time. So that is Hunter's beard. You are correct. But these eyes are actually Jem's eyes. Ooh. Yeah. So uh, just double checking there. Yep. Jem's eyes. So you both get a point here. That makes okay. I I'm finally that. look at me. I have two points. Yeah, two points. Go. Sasha has five. So if you make a clean sweep on this next one, you are able to catch up. And I won't. Yeah, so well, I Jim, think Jem's eyes. Yeah. This this lovely face can help you. Okay, I need to stand up. <laughs> oh, no, this is... Okay. So this is Maria. Uh, and Maria is, of course, mixed in with a couple of other contestants at the moment. I, I can't really describe what Maria looks like. Oh, this is so bad. <laughs> what is going on with her face? Yeah, like, I, I don't know if it's... Honestly, like, she looks like a firefighter. I don't know why I have that feeling. Oh, interesting. She kind of has that firefighter face. Her face looks like she has a burn scar. (laughs) So maybe she's a firefighter. There's a blur. Okay, I think, I just need to, what? (laughs) (laughs) This is so crazy. Oh my god, I really... The eyebrows um, are killing listen, me, bro. I'm just, I'm just out here guessing because I. Good. I, that's okay. That's the I, the game. All right, Sasha. Who you got? Who you got written down? Mariah and Ben. Okay, so you think it's Maria? Oh, Mariah. Yeah, and ben. yeah. Okay. I was like, wait, what? All right, and Kirsten. Okay, um, I have Maria, Tevin, and Ben. Oh, that was okay. Yeah, that's a good one. I could see it. Kirsten, unfortunately, you blanked on this round. Uh, yeah. So Sasha got Mariah. It is Mariah's mouth. Yeah. But it is Charlie's oh. eyes. Damn. That oh. was my next guess. Charlie's oh, got boo. that squint going on. 
Yeah, I just, the oh, under eye was killing me. I felt like Charlie, like, had a little bit more youthful, like, under eye. I mean, but that's also, like, the Photoshop job isn't perfect, right? Right. So, oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I'm also, listen, I'm not good at this, so it's okay. Damn. I'm mad. I could have got <laughs> You won, Sasha. No, it's just Come not on. the point. Oh, the game's not over yet. No. No, I assumed. <laughs> Here's our face to welcome us into the second half of this game. Second oh, half. Oh, <laughs> mamma mia. Okay, this one. <laughs> okay, I have it already. Wow, okay, Sasha. <laughs> I, it's already on the buzzer. Uh, I'll yeah. give Chris a little bit more time. I need time to get if... my freaking glasses checked. Yeah. Because I'm like, I've oh, never see, met any of You would suffer so life. much if you spun the wheel and it landed on taking your glasses away before this challenge. Oh, I, I, how could I do worse than I'm already doing? To me, this looks like Q tried to light a piece of dynamite and it blew up in his face like in a cartoon and like there's a little <laughs> bit of residue on yeah, him. Yeah, it's still like talcum powder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How yeah, he's trying to powder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like when you, you oh get the God. setting um powder that has yes. the crazy flashback. The white cast. Uh, yeah. Listen, um, as people of color, I really understand yeah, this. It's like Q, Q got Q got it as a quick drag and used too much highlight on him. So it's just like yeah. he looks basically like the lone ranger at this point it's giving okay. 50 spf <laughs> <laughs> should All i right. use black girl sunscreen sasha what have you got yeah it's yanu it's yanu try so you just write down the three members like the three remaining yeah. members of yanu yeah sorry i was just all right kirsten came to me so quickly okay i have Q Kenzie, and then I put Tevin again because I feel like if I keep writing Tevin down eventually he'll be in <laughs> oh, but one tiffany of them. has was doing right yeah, Does so, she? yeah, Sasha I don't, I didn't so Tiffany has the septum piercing, which obviously gives away the nose oh, yeah. and the mouth. And then those are indeed Kenzie's eyes. So if the Yanu tribe decided in the revels of their victory to go carnal and get some wet meat swords hanging no! around, oh my god, this is what their no. child might look like. This is I'm, who no, is this is not what their child would meat. look like. How dare you? They would make a much more attractive child. Yeah, because they're this. all very attractive people. Like they're, all three of them. they're good looking. They, they how dare you? Just because Yanu over here doesn't know how to use setting spray does not mean they're not beautiful. No, the problem is I think Yanu brought in the wrong makeup artist. Yep. Um, I maybe mean, yeah. that's why they've been losing. Because it's just the if white If you cast, don't look good, how are you going to feel good? Yeah. And how exactly. are you gonna win? The white cast has been like cl- clouding their vision. Dress for the job you want. And the job mm, you want is winner uh, of a challenge. And this is so, not a winner. So if the face no. card isn't matching. Face it's cards are declined. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so oh, Sasha God. is in a pretty, you know, resounding lead at this yeah, point, geez. getting all of Yanu. It's curtains for me. It was curtains <laughs> before it started. No. Curtains for Kirsten, but we still got a few more to go through. Let's continue to make this fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, th- if Soda, um, uh, what's the, like, does a suit or if 46 does a l- class action suit against RHAP, I will understand. And I think I will join. It. I will testify on their behalf. <laughs> That's what yeah. I'm saying. Because I know what like, this, Soda, this, uh uh-uh, uh, you deserve better. So, <laughs> I, Boy, what I just that? don't like it's not even a five head, it's like a several head. No, it's the. An- it's the mouth is on the our left and the nose uh, on the right. I think that it's just well, maybe this was a, a bare knuckle yeah. bro- boxer might have gotten knocked yes. around a few times. Uh, it's giving very much that. All right, I am. I don't know. Yeah, so this is Soda, obviously, and a couple of other castaways. Uh, I will say this is giving less camp counselor and more so like. Jason Voorhees, Friday the 13th. <laughs> mm, find him in the Crystal Lake. Oh my god. I This one I actually like. I'm struggling, as per usual. I'm trying to figure out the nose. <sighs> the, the off-center nose has you it's off-kilter. killing me. <laughs> Is the nose and the mouth together and the eyes are different? So I believe... 
I I believe the nose. Yeah, is, yeah, it has the to nose be. is sodas. Yeah. So I will oh, say that. Oh, okay, yeah, okay, that makes way more. Because I was like, this, this is not working. Okay, okay, okay. You know what? Let me just. So the, the nose was here. the centerpiece. It's everything else that's misaligned. Yeah. All right, Kirsten, <sighs> as you throw up your hands in, in uh, partially I, fatigue, listen, what do you have? Um, I wrote down soda, Venus, and Ben. Ooh. Okay, Sasha. Tevin and Venus. If it's right. Tevin when I didn't guess Tevin. Yeah, that, I, I only self. remember because you said Tevin. So, <laughs> I will, so I will say, yes, I believe it's the eyes are yeah. Venus's. The mouth Ooh. is Ben's. Oh, good yes! job. Yes! Yes! yes. You can kind of see the shadow of stubble that they tried oh. to cover up. So I was like, I know it's a man. The I color know it's is a man with a facial hair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Kirsten, as much as you thought you were out of it, now we are at 11 points to eight points. You have gotten a, a pretty good striking distance from Sasha. I have eight points. How did that happen? Oh my so God. It was a lot of I'm singles. And then you, you netted that triple here. Did I get a bonus for having a good attitude? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh all right god. well okay, seriously, like win. this, this photo okay. we'll get this off our screens please. well um the worst careful. oh no it's gonna get worse be careful what you wish for oh! <laughs> <laughs> no yeah <laughs> I... <laughs> No, just just end it quickly. Just answer something and just move on. Cause eight, no, no. You know what? I'm gonna mail this to your house. And like, if you ever piss me off, whoever. This is, this is literally Mike. How did you get a picture of my sleep paralysis demon? Yeah, I don't understand. Just standing in the corner of the room. I, no, the, the thing is, people thought glitter bombs were bad. No, I'm gonna send you this in the mail, and I'm gonna send you, and somehow it's gonna be like 20 things in your house. Like, yeah, I, but I, I would, I'll turn this into a T-shirt so that everyone else has to look at it every oh time they watch it. No, I'm sending this to my enemies. So, like, if you piss me off, this is coming. To, ain't no way. Ain't no way. Yeah, so I feel like if this character had a name, it would probably be something like, I don't know, like Raymond the Rat. Like, he has very rodent-like features uh, between, yeah. like, the kind of smaller face and the prominent teeth. I, like, he feels like he could be some sort of low-level mobster. I think, mm -hmm. well, I think that just, like, the sizing of the pieces that was put together, like, the, the ratio is off. Like, this isn't... No, it just doesn't, doesn't work. work. That's it. Those are not Charlie's features. And poor Charlie. <laughs> yeah, poor, poor Charlie, unfortunately. He does win the episode, but uh, definitely does not necessarily win the face card. Oh right my there. god, no, at what? I don't, know, I don't know if I'm blaming him as much as perhaps the other two contestants that had their features Ooh. mixed in with Charlie's. Sasha, who do you think those people are? Randon and the eyes, I think, are Tevin. It's the eyebrow. Race. Okay, Randon and Tevin. Kirsten, what about you? And I also wrote down Charlie, Tevin, and Randon. You are both correct. So it is indeed Charlie's lovable face. It is Randon's lovable beard. And it is Tevin's Randon, Rev, lovable eyes, complete with, as you mentioned, Sasha, that really nice eyebrow pop. But yeah, mixed together, good lord. Hate this for us. Yeah, I hope those three never have a child. Well, I, I really hope not. The last one. <laughs> I do. I, I actually have to issue an apology here. Oh, and a no. mea culpa. If Mike is saying that, that means. Yeah, like is... look at everything he hasn't apologized for. Now yeah, he has like, to apologize. The oh, Amazing no. Race podcast outfit. What do you mean? So, you know what um, I mean? Uh, if anyone, including her, or anyone who's related to her or anyone you who's thought about woman. Jessica Chong watches this podcast. I am so, so sorry. This does not reflect her as a person whatsoever. But this is the final photo. No! <laughs> no, you... This. I didn't do this! I did no. not do this! No, th You chose this... to put it on the podcast. No, shut this app down like that. <laughs> I... Like, I actually don't even know who I'm going to pick. Like, that's how <laughs> bad this is. Like, <laughs> like what? What? <laughs> oh, 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 
my goodness. Hell no. This is so bad. Yeah. This is uh this is doing I think everyone involved a disservice very much so. No one no one, not one person should be. Oh my god. So this Lord. is Jess, of course, our aunt queen of the season. Uh, and she is in a colony right now with two other contestants that mix their facial features together to assemble what appears to be some sort of human. Though I would not be surprised if they were some sort of alien disguising themselves as such. It's the smile. Like, I do Okay, huh? This, I... Chills to the bone. Uh, chill to the bone. I'm And the eyes, too. Uh, the eyes are... I, th- I think I, like I'm gonna have to go to church after we get off this podcast. No, like, it's I'm Easter. Really, me too, and like, I'm not even the... like Christian. Please. No, I just have a well of holy water back there that I cleanse myself in after every podcast. But this one, I'm dumping the whole thing on like I won the yeah. big game. I need to go to a mikvah. <laughs> this is horrendous. I cannot tell you whose mouth it is because I can't look at it. <laughs> I know that's I'm the problem. Hard. Like every time you try to catch a glance at what it might be, the more you're basically looking into a solar eclipse and the further chance you're going to get permanent retinal damage. Nah, bro. This is so bad. <laughs> well, I Kirsten, don't know who's... Kirsten, how are you faring right now? I, I wrote something down. I don't yeah. feel good about it. I don't think it's right. But I couldn't keep... Could I lose? I need to put a post-it note over my screen right now so I don't have to see this Is there a possibility I could lose? I... Uh, so Kirsten is, uh, Kirsten is behind by three exact points. Oh, shit. Okay. So Sasha, if you get none and Kirsten gets all of them, yeah. then it's okay. a tie. Yeah, and Otherwise... I gotta tell you right now, you don't have to be worried yeah, about that. at least we time. tie. No, that's fine. Okay. All right, well, let's start with the person that's behind, uh, right now. Kirsten... Yes, yes. What are the other two people mixed in with Jess right now? I wrote Jessica, Banu, and Jelinski. All right. Oh, our uh, pre-merge Yanu trio all mixed together. This is, the, I guess, the other half of the yeah. Yanu yeah, love that's child. True. Yanu part one. <laughs> Sasha, what about you? Oh, I put Kenzie and Ben. Because the, the eyes just did not give Jelinski. Sasha, you finished this game. With yet another perfect match, it is <gasps> beautiful. Kenzie's mouth and Ben's eyes. Ben yeah, also the has smile. the spin game going on. Yeah, the the smile because I was like, the eyebrows is a man. I don't think that's Jelinski. And um, also, yeah, uh, as yeah. a bit of a hint, look on her arms. That's also a bit of a nudge towards Kenzie. Oh, I didn't even. Jess was not tatted up. <laughs> I didn't even. I wasn't Ain't looking no at way. that because we were told that the body would be yep, the main like, person, oh, and now you're saying that. alterations were made to the body. That was a little interesting. Clear. Interesting. Got I it. literally was like, oh, I guess Jess has tat. I would. <laughs> I, I like what you need to realize and what I think everyone can see based on how poorly I performed oh in this game. God. Any episode of TV I'm watching, for the most part, I'm like half watching, half on my phone. Like, I'm not Me looking, too. I'm not yeah. studying their faces to know each and every feature. I don't so like, I, now I don't know the, them like that. The solution is we send these photos to you as you're watching the episode. So you're on your phone, you're scrolling oh through, and you God. get yeah, randomly. Sh- no, never send me these and images. You're like, oh shit, ever. I gotta watch the episode now because otherwise I'm gonna look at my phone and get, you know, uh, the per- people from the ring coming at me. Oh my, oh my god. god. Oh my. He's like, do you want to play a game? Yeah, exactly. Hills have and eyes. I'm like, no, I don't want to play a game. Well, I'm so glad you both did. Uh, congratulations oh. to Sasha. Though, Kirsten, Woo-hoo! again, you I think you you sold yourself short a little bit. You yeah. got 11 points at the end of the day off of eight photos. Yeah, I, I don't know how. I, I did okay, I guess. You did great. How dare you? But I'm traumatized. So, like, at what cost, you know? I didn't even win. I just can't close my eyes. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we are about to close out this podcast, at least. But first, of course, we always want to dedicate some time to a charity or cause that is special to our guests at the end of every BNB podcast. And we've got double the guests. So I think we have double the shout outs going on. Kirsten, let's start with you. What would you like to shout out this week? Yeah. So as per usual, this is my always shout out. And this is a Canadian organization. So look for the equivalent in America, if you want to, but the Canadian Brain Tumor Foundation is doing a lot of research um, specifically on glioblastomas, which are a really misunderstood type of brain tumor. So 
any any so any donation to cancer research or to help cancer patients while they're getting treatment that that's my shout sasha what about you great and as for me um i'm i'm gonna go a little bit more yeah uh, whatever y'all will know i think you should donate to your local uh, domestic violence shelter if mm. uh violence prevention uh and if you're in california you can just go to california partnership to end domestic violence and they have all the centers listed in oh. california so that's where i go um you know and i go to the bay area and find my particular shelter but the point is like donate to your local women's shelter mm -hmm. Absolutely. yeah and if if you have to clean out your closet that's exactly. a great way to do that without yeah. having to spend uh, any money because mm -hmm. you've already spent money on those clothes. So donate Help them, them to out. women in need. No, that's a yes. really great call out, both of you. Uh, and thank you both for coming on, for sampling so many odd things over the course of this episode. Uh, we had a great time to set up, again, the next stage of the game as this game will turn actually 100% individual with mergatory. So like, individual but then there's also like a team aspect baked in as well let's throw out some some hot predictions here sasha who is getting voted out next week who's going to be the first Ooh. booted out in the individual phase i beg that it's not these people but i think it might be one of venus or q okay Kirsten, what beg. about you no. Um, okay, so I feel like the person that gets voted out in this spot often is someone where it seems like it's coming totally out of left field. Mm. So I'm going to say it will either be, and again, not saying I want it to be these people. I think it's either going to be Liz or Soda. Ooh. Interesting. I might keep the Sega boot streak going. Going to what I've talked about before with mergatory and how oftentimes the people that are thrown under the bus are those that don't have people going to bat for them. I will go with the person who arguably had their closest ally just eliminated and they were oh, the only right. person not in on the vote. I think if Mariah doesn't win that challenge, there's a fair shot that uh, you know she's not going to be able to make the leap in a manner speaking to the jury phase. But We'll see. Again, Mergatory is purposely constructed where, like, anything can happen. But no matter what, we're going to be having a fun time as Liana will be back next week, and she will not be alone. She's bringing along with her Dwight Moore from Survivor 43, oh. Oh. someone who experienced his own Mergatory. So we'll see how his experience stacks up with what they're about to experience over the course of Survivor 46. I'm really excited. Again, I will totally, you know, uh, echo what the both of you said in that, I think I have been having a lot of fun with this pre-merge, perhaps more than some fans out there as someone who likes characters, who likes wacky personalities, who builds an entire freaking podcast out of it. And that being said, I liked an episode that was able to also include that, but then also have like some new excitement infused in the game. I was so happy for Yanu, like Kirsten said, like exhilaration goosebumps from those three finally being able to win an immunity challenge and get fire for the first time. And then getting to see Sega do some work. Listen, in a perfect world, Nami would have also gotten the chance before the merge, but then we also wouldn't have gotten this like unprecedented and unpredictable winning streak from them. So I'm excited for these personalities to finally come together from all sides and see how they'll clash and how they'll mesh as we move into the second half of the game. I know that you both are out there making hay while the sun is shining, certainly when it comes to reality television. Sasha, let's start with you. What do you want to plug this week? Yes, Kirsten and I, of course, cover a podcast where we chat about pop culture, current topics, current events. Honestly, you name it, we're talking about it. And this last week, we talked about Diddy. So if you're like, what the hell's going on there? Ooh. We talked about it and so much more. So check that out um, on Rob has a website slash mess feed. And Chappelle and I talk Below Deck, where we're uh, talking about Below Deck season 11 um, right here on the Rob has a podcast YouTube channel, if you're watching us, and uh, on the Bravo TV wrap up feed if you want to listen to us. And Bryce Isaiah and I talk Love and Hip Hop, also season 11. So check that out on Bryce Isaiah's YouTube channel or the verbal pants feed and i was a guest on well on the patron only Ooh. um 
feed Mike a follow up podcast. Uh, so I'm gonna say it to our um, on the free agents. Oh, 40 yes, draft. yes. So we drafted um, the cast for 40. And honestly, again, a great Delulu team. And for everything else, just follow me on Twitter at fun size underscore oh four. Couldn't help but notice my invitation was left in the mail for because you won. I, I guess I, uh, I, I was gonna say, I guess it was a matter of like, uh, I, I. I'll pat myself a bit on the back that I did do fairly well, though it helped that there were, oh, yes. spoiler alert, 40 contestants on season 40. So I think the <laughs> wide net got cast and I brought in some okay fish. Kirsten, what would you like to plug? Yes. Yeah, so as Josh already said, she explained what mess magnets is, but I don't know if she said the words mess magnets. So I'm oh, just like, go listen to mess magnets. <laughs> There's a secret um, coded phrase that you have to yeah, decipher. So if you just, know, you just know. Knows, that's, that's what it's called when we talk each week. <laughs> yeah, I said mess um, feed. <laughs> You said mess feed. You did. Well, say it's just like that Super Bowl commercial, um, right? Where it's like super vague and epic and you only understand what the product is at the end. Correct. Yes, exactly. Now is the end. Um, <laughs> and uh, as well, I guested on the BB Can eviction recap this past week with you, Mike, which yes. was very fun. Uh, I also guested on Lonely Boys this past week to talk about you know, spoilers for Gossip Girl, but the episode where Bart Bass comes back to, from the dead uh, just in time for Easter. And you can follow me everywhere at Kirsten Said What, including twitch.tv slash Kirsten Said What. Is Bart Chuck's dad? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't <laughs> want to know the man that sired that Creepo Depot, so I'm glad I don't even want to <laughs> think about it. <laughs> well, he's my- back. That's my own sleep demon. That's the face that's going to haunt me at night. Uh, Chuck can- Bass, that's a good one. Yeah, no, no, Bart Bass. I can't even imagine what old man Bass looks like. Uh, oh, God. He looks pretty can, normal. You can follow me at a Mike Bloom type. I got the chance to talk with Jim, which was very fun. Uh, she was shot out of a cannon. I think she showed it. She had a lot of personality, and she made it abundantly clear in her interviews as well that she was not for the vibe tribe. Uh, that maybe, again, that was maybe one of the reasons why, unfortunately, she ends up going the way that she did is... She was ready to play perhaps at a different speed or a different tempo, if you will, than these other people were dancing. So she talks all about it and her big journey of 11 days over at Parade.com, where I also interviewed the team most recently eliminated from The Amazing Race. Talked about it this week as well with Jess and Will from season 32. Sasha, how are you enjoying The Amazing Race so far? So I... I it's so so i must say i feel like we've had better seasons and i think again it could be COVID, right like mm-hmm. with the um cast but see episode three i think where i was like oh i think i'm gonna get back in but one and two i was yeah i was like oh what happened yeah so a bit of a change in location mm-hmm. we went from mexico to colombia which shook things yeah. up a little bit uh as the season continues to do lots of entertaining mistakes being the, made that part <laughs> boy so- the twins bless their hearts yeah, so we had a lot of fun breaking that down, and we'll keep on keeping on with that into this week. Uh, and finally, Pro Show Recaps is being brought down for a landing. On the day we are recording this, I believe, uh, is when the shop is officially being closed up. So I did a couple podcasts over this past week, a listener survey at the top 10 TV shows of the past 10 years. Helped contribute my voice in a couple ways on a very interesting podcast that I think should be out soon, if not out already. But I'm excited to move forward with whatever comes next from that, as well as whatever comes next from Survivor 46. And I'll plug for Liana as well to check out her Drag Race coverage and her coverage of The Masked Singer as well. I don't know if she's on Drag Race this week, but just check it out in general because Beth and Amon are amazing. And of course, her and Puya will talk Masked Singer when they get to it. Uh, And so we will as well with Survivor 46 next week, Mergatory with Dwight Moore. Super excited for that. If you have any game ideas or absurd images you'd like to send us that will make sure that none of us get any sleep for the next three weeks, you can send them to us, rhapbnb at gmail.com or use the hashtag rhapbnb on social media. Sean, thank you so much. God, I hated these pictures and I love them at the same time, which I think was the point. Uh, So again, we are accepting to any and all ideas, especially as we move into the back half of this season. Thanks so much to the team at RHAP behind the scenes for making sure this podcast goes out to your eyes and ears for your enjoyment, and Wolfram America for his fantastic theme song. Liana and I will be back next week with Dwight Moore recapping episode six of Survivor 46. Until then, everybody, we'll check you out at your next day. <laughs>